Black Swan Hello my lovelies, it's Helen here. Welcome back to my channel and to today's video. So as you saw from the thumbnail, I am doing a stunning ombre on this lovely client of mine. And if you want to see how I did it, stick around and I'll take you through the process. As you can see, we do have a few casualties in this set and I will be replacing the missing nails with some tips and that ring finger that's missing the little tip of it, I will be extending it using a nail form. Uh, but in the meantime, I am removing the old gel polish which is on there using my carbide bit and e-file and I'm just zooming along and removing it. It's like a hot knife through butter. After removing the gel polish and any lifting that was on the acrylic, I swap over to my mandrel bit with a fine sanding band. The grit on this sanding band is I think 240 grit and I'm using it to pass over the natural nail while also going over the acrylic part to help smooth out any lumps or bumps that's in it. The speed setting on your e-file should be on low because you do not want to cause any damage to the natural nail by putting it any higher than a low speed. The higher you have the setting on your e-file, the faster the bit will turn and rotate and the less control you have over how much product and how much natural nail you remove. So always keep your speed setting on a low when the bit will come into contact with the natural nail. The next step in this process is to replace all the missing tips, which is on the pinky and pointer. Once I've stuck them on with nail glue, I'm just using my scissors to trim them to the desired length, while also trimming away the sides to give me the stiletto shape. Now we need to blend in the tip and that means blending in the point where the tip meets the nail. So it just looks like one natural long nail. Be sure to only pass the e-file over the plastic tip and not over the natural nail. With all the nail prep complete, I have removed the dust and primed the nails and now I'm going right into the acrylic application process. So for the pinky, I've gone in and I'm attempting to do the one bead method. I've placed a clear cuticle bead close to the eponychium and I'm angling the finger downwards to allow gravity to help the bead move downwards in the direction I need it to go and then I'm using my brush to guide the acrylic where I need it to be. The ring finger is missing the tip part of the stiletto so I'm going to use my nail form to help me extend that little bit. So with the nail form under the nail I am placing a bead of acrylic right where I need the stiletto tip to be and then I am brushing the bead backwards to help it blend with the rest of the nail that's there. Now I am working the tip to look more like a point with my brush and when I'm happy with that I am completing the nail by placing a cuticle bead and then feathering that over the entire nail. Moving on to the next nail, this one's a straightforward refill at the cuticle part. So with a bead I place it close to the eponychium and pat it into place making sure the acrylic doesn't touch the side walls and then brushing it down over the entire nail. And again with the pointer finger I'm going to apply the acrylic with the one bead method and the bead needs to be big enough to cover the whole nail so you don't have to do it in sections. Though if you do feel comfortable breaking up the nail into two or three sections, do not hesitate to do that because to be honest, for me, I find it makes my life easier when I break it up into three sections, but sometimes I just wanna go right in and one ball it because <laughs> I like to make my life difficult. And finishing up with the thumbnail, it's a straightforward refill at the cuticle part there as well. And again with a medium sized bead placed at the cuticle and feathering over the nail. 
Always when applying acrylic to the cuticle area, whether it's in a three bead or one bead method, do angle the finger downwards. This will help prevent it moving backwards towards the cuticle and flooding it. And two, it will help you by allowing gravity to pull the bead down the nail in the direction that you want it. So all my application is complete and my acrylic is dry and now I am finished filing the nails. I'm using a 180 grit file to shape the free edge and I'm also using it with long nails I tend to like to hand file the free edge. It helps me get a better shape I feel when the nails are on the longer side and especially with stilettos I find hand filing the free edge gets me a better stiletto looking nail. With that complete, I then use my e-file to file around the cuticle area. I always find my e-file can get right into those side walls and eponychium area without making my client bleed because I do end up cutting my clients when I hand file around the cuticle area. This is the ring finger with the missing tip that I extended and I'm just neatening up the ledge which is underneath where I extended the acrylic. And now we can move on to the design. I'm using this gorgeous teal colour by Madame Glam and for the ring fingers on both hands I'm going to be painting the entire nail with this colour. A nice pro tip for when it comes to painting and getting a nice neat cuticle is to paint your first layer as thin as possible without it being too transparent. This way you can get nice and close to the cuticle without actually flooding it with the product. And now for the gel ombre part of this design. On the entire nail I am placing a base coat and then just on the tip I am placing the colour of choice. And then with an ombre brush I am moving my hand left to right over the point where the two colours meet to help blend them in together. Once I'm happy with the blend, I cure it and then I repeat the same process, but this time I only take the base coat to halfway and then the remainder of the halfway I put the colour and then again with my ombre brush, I blend in the two colours together. I'm saying colours even though the second one is just a clear, but you know, old habits die hard. I always find gel ombres the hardest to do because either you choose colours that blend together beautifully or like me and like most of the times I've done gel ombre the two colours just don't want to blend nicely and I am having a little bit of trouble getting these to blend beautifully I think it's because I'm going from colour to clear um, but I did find and hopefully this will help you too is if you move your brush only from left to right and only in that direction and then lifting up your brush and moving again left to right so not going back and forth but moving in one direction and then lifting up the brush and moving back to the beginning of the left and moving across and once you have completed your ombre and are happy with it even though it was a very difficult process for me <laughs> i cured the nails in the led light for a full minute and now i want to apply a chrome to the nails to help blend in the blend of the ombre so i need to apply a no wipe top coat on all the nails and then cure them again in my led light for a full minute and when the light turns off, get your chrome ready so you can apply it straight away. I like to use my finger with applying chrome because I find the silicone tools just don't seem to work for me. And I also like to feel how I'm applying it. As you can see here, I, I like to push it right into the cuticle and I feel the texture of my skin and the puffiness of my finger can help the chrome get right into the cuticle part. Once the chrome is applied, I dust off any excess chrome powder and apply the final no wipe top coat to the chrome nails because I didn't chrome the ring finger. So they will get another coat of no wipe top coat and cured again in the LED light for another minute. Now I'm going to secure some crystals to the ring finger and I'm using jewellery gel by Miss You Australia and a gel brush to apply it to the nail. 
and before I actually press in any crystals into this layer I'm going to apply a no wipe top coat and then use my crystal picker up a tool to apply all the crystals which I want and this these crystals are by Sarah Bachet do keep an eye on her online shop and grab the crystal packs as soon as they come out because they do go quick when I'm happy with the placement of all my crystals, I cure them in my LED light for a minute to set them in place. And then I use Glitz Accessories and such, their precision glue, to border all my crystals and secure them in place. This needs to be cured in the LED light again, and then this set will be ready for reveal. Would you look at that sparkle? Well, here's the completed set, my lovelies. What do you think of it? Be sure to let me know down below in the comments what you thought of this set. Also, don't forget to like this video if you enjoyed it. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel as well. And click that notification bell so you get notified whenever I put out a new video. And that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. Do join me on my next one whenever that will be. And I will catch you then. Bye.